Good morning everyone. Today we're going to have a little look at the Centenary Neophone. This was um, brought in by the Siemens brothers who were based at Woolwich I believe and of course Siemens brothers were brothers of the other Siemens that lived in Germany and both lots were very into phones, modern things of the day concerning phones, uh, particularly in Germany with Halski and uh, they brought in a lot, of, uh, a lot of ideas including that dial which I talk about on the autophone which in my opinion is quite a good dial. Uh, not everyone thinks they're that good but um, yeah, I was quite impressed. Anyhow, let's get back into this. You'll probably hear a pussycat meowing. Um, this, as I say, is the Centenary Neophone, also known because of that. The Horseshoe Phone. I understand they're fair, fairly rare now. Don't know. I don't even know where where I got this this one from. But I was lucky enough to get it. It's in black, which is a nice colour. Well, not a colour. Black's not a colour. Um, the phone design was by Mr. John Barnes of Alan Bowden and put in production in 1958. I remember 1958 very well. Um, I remember I was at school in, yeah, I think I, I was well as, still at school then, I probably probably was. Because 1957, I can always remember the adverts. Enjoy 1957 with Heinz 57 varieties. Once again, I know I'm show, showing my age, but I do think of the old things and how life was... In those days, quite enjoyable. There's, it seems to be much freer than it is now, but anyhow, it's just my opinion. Anyhow, as I say, this was in 1958 they brought this phone out. Um, it was called the 600 model. They did make other later models, but this is the 600 one, which we can concentrate on. Uh, the handset is exceptionally light. In fact, the weight of it was seven seventy, no, seven ounces, or two hundred grams. Sorry if I get my numbers mixed up. I am number blind, um, and it's made of polystyrene. That'd be obviously the case, and the handset. Originally, the handset was was. Um, a one-piece job. I don't quite understand that. I think they meant that it was joined along the length and to take it apart you had to remove those. But this one has got like the standard type of handset arrangement with your uh, two screw-on caps, transmit and receiver. Um, without taking it off, the Receiver is the rocking armature type, same type that you would find in a 706. And the, the microphone part is our good old top hat type, which was a well proven design and quite a, success, quite a successful design. Now that's the handset futuristic shape but as I say it is very very light now let's have a closer look at the actual instrument itself the cover was just propped on top so I can take it off quite easily in fact these covers do come off easily and um, they're held on 
by two screws into two little two little supporting uh, bracket like arrangements and are much easier to put on and off than the 706 anyhow this phone came out before the 706 jest and we'll go into that a bit later it was thought to be the first phone using a printed circuit and there's the printed circuit board there You've got your terminals at the back, which is characteristic of the fact that this early one, the not every terminal was actually shown. Um, I think they were numbered one, two. Yeah, they were. They were. They were numbered. It's not actually on there. And where the little holes were, was where there could have been terminals, but there's not. If you know what I mean. Inside, we have the normal capacitor. And next to it, an induction coil. More or less a modern type of induction coil as well. It's not like the old ones that were found on the other uh, 332s. The bell, however, I haven't taken the I haven't taken the dial off to get underneath so I can see. So I have to use what space I have to show you what the bell's like. It's slightly different to what you would normally see on a seven hundred, and it did have, if I can point it out. there you can just see it there is the the bias spring which you can hook into any one of those serrated uh, positions we got uh, five there now this is typical of the American type of phones which do have this this, this type of bias so there's obviously an idea that that they got from the Americans. But anyhow, there's the actual coils, which is twin coils. The, um, the resistance of these is slightly higher, I believe, than a thousand. But there's nothing on the coil to indicate uh, the value, which is unusual. But it is a totally a totally different ringer than you would normally find on the 706 and the other thing is look at the bells or the gongs they are mounted upside down well I could say upside down they're the other way around the striker is shaped I can show you there are it's shaped to go in so that you hit the bells on the right on, on the best position no way of increasing or reducing the sound of the bell what you got was was virtually what you got the rest of it very basic very basic I don't know whether there is a diagram underneath it, it it may be possible that there's a diagram under the printed circuit. I, I can't see. I'm just looking. Well, I do notice there's a like a plate or something over there. Yeah, at the back you've got the where the ringer comes out. It's sort of um, a covering, probably to prevent the ingress. Of ingress um, of insects which might occur. Now that's the base. Nothing on the base at all. Not a thing. Um, no indication on the uh, uh, the cover. 
of a make or anything but believe me it is the centenary neophone or the good old horseshoe that is more or less all I can say about this um, I can say where it was used it as I say shortly after these were introduced time was spent by this company and other companies within the phone industry to produce the 706 and that came out very shortly afterwards um, here we got you know, this this phone was used by the Hull Corporation and some Commonwealth countries at this time the 706 was being developed and this was used by the GPO so it was more or less overshadowed by the introduction of the 706 which I've talked about numerous times with its various clones and the like um, that is more or less all I've, I've got to say on here the dial is the normal dial found on a 706 notice the finger stop the nice silver or metal dial it's quite a good dial actually and looking at it from the side there's no cover on it or anything but it is quite a well made dial it's the old trigger dial and just showing numbers so this phone was obviously for an internal installation you see on there instructions left hand listen for dial tone so it tells you how to use it anyway that's more or less all I've got to say on this phone further readings and what I give you is a very very good point for reading on various British phones not just this one it lists a whole range of phones British and foreign to some extent it's the site is britishtelephone.com and you'll find that on good old Google so it's British Telephone, one word, dot com for further reading. Anyhow, thanks again for hearing this. I hope I haven't driven you all to sleep. And thanks again. Any questions, obviously, make and I'll try and get back to you. Thanks again. Thank you.